Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. Um, morning after the game, uh, rough as fuck again, shouting, singing, drained. Woke up sore throat, didn't sleep. Got me through as usual. But I'll be honest with you, I enjoyed the match. I enjoyed the match. We got there yesterday, Liverpool, um, early doors, got to the Thomas Frost pub, uh, which is always a decent pub. It's 50-50, Liverpool City in there, but uh, never no trouble. Um, noticed that the uh, the coaches uh, went a different way, which really made me piss because uh, we've seen them all waiting on the road with flares and cans and bottles and you know the game, you know, at Liverpool, but the City coach uh, had other ideas and uh, slipped in the back door and that was it. But um, before the game, the atmosphere was building nice. A lot of Liverpool fans were messaging saying they were confident, rightly so, at Anfield. Um, but me personally, I was confident. I thought that City could go there, do a job on them, you know what I mean? Um, I said it before the game on numerous previews. We've got to control the tempo of the game and we've got to control the crowd. If we start letting the crowd get involved and getting it up, we know what it's like there at Anfield and, you know, it, it, it ends up being long. You know what I mean? Um, we got in the ground, they, uh, they announced the City team. I think everyone was relatively happy with the team. Ruben Diaz was not playing. That was a bit strange, but... Um, uh, and, and Alvarez on the left was another strange one. But other than that, the City fans that I was speaking to before the game was like, yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? Let's go. Um, Liverpool had Canate missing, so they had Kwanzaa at the back. Um, but yeah, it was setting up nice for a, for a, for a, for a, a, a ding-dong game. You know what I mean? Um, finally got in the new uh, Anfield Road end. It made a great change to not have that shit roof over your head where you can't see a fucking thing. Um, it's supposed to be a new stand, but underneath the toilets are tiny, man. You couldn't even have a piss or anything if you you wanted a piss. You was not getting a piss for fucking ten minutes. It was murder. So that needs sorting out. But anyway, the city fans were in good voice, and we were ready to go. So the game kicks off. Um, atmosphere's pumped up. You know what I mean? The old speakers were playing again and getting them all rocking and that. So they were uh, they were all in full full voice. City end was good. And um, the game started fast, and and and, and um, I thought City did well. You know what I mean? We started um, finding gaps. We started um, coming deep for the ball, picking it up in good areas, moving it well. I thought, you know, we had a couple of good chances early doors where we broke Foden, Walker, etc. And I'm thinking, yeah, we're doing all right here. We're not doing too bad. We restricted Liverpool to these long balls. You know, every time Keller got the ball. He was looking for Darwin for the long ball, uh, knocking it long. Everything was, you know, going all right. You know what I mean? 25 minutes, first 25, 35 minutes in the game, I thought City were were the better side. I did. I thought we were we were controlling the game. Um, I thought the only downfall was how sloppy we was. You know what I mean? I thought the, the only team that's going to beat Manchester City is ourselves. You know what I mean? The sloppiness sometimes from us was unbelievable. Rodri, fantastic, you know what I mean? Playoff this season, I think it was one of the worst games I've seen Rodri play. He was miles off it with the ball. He kept giving it away. He was hooking it clear. Um, Alvarez, first half, uh, you know, got in some great positions, did some good things. But then a lot of the time when he was getting pressed, he was panicking. Flicking his foot out at it, Bernardo Silva, doing little flicks and back heels that wasn't coming off. And, and then I could see people starting to get frustrated, you know what I mean? Um, the goal, we got a good goal. Johnny Stones near post. Great work by Nathan Ake pushing the defender out of the way. Stone steals in at the front post, something they've obviously worked on. Taps it in. We're 1-0 up at Anfield. City ends going up and that. And we're thinking, this could be our day, this. This could be our day. But then we start giving the ball away. We start doing stupid fouls. We're getting the crowd up again. So towards the end of the first half, Rodri and Kyle Walker are arguing. 
Rodri kept giving the ball away. Uh, Walker called him out on it. Fair enough. Um, he didn't fucking like it. He was throwing his arms about. De Bruyne is coming over, telling him to calm down and all that. They're having a few little tips. Bernardo Silva was uh, getting rattled by the crowd. He was trying to chop people down when he was giving the ball away. Uh, Alvarez was panicking, putting us under pressure. So last 10 minutes of the half, we were 1-0 up, but it, it sort of went a bit to shit. You know, we felt like we just needed to calm down, you know what I mean? Calm down. Um, Liverpool often puffed that, that half as well. Um, I think City upset them a bit by changing the kickoff, making them shoot at the cop first. Um, but yeah, it was it wasn't a bad half from City as a City fan being at the stadium. I was at half time, I'm thinking, I'll take that. We looked okay, we created chances, they had a few chances, but we wasn't really in trouble. We weren't really in trouble. So at half time, I'm thinking, right, second half, come out. Get hold of the ball. Let's keep our passing going. Move it around. Let Liverpool chase us around. Let us press. Zip it about nice. Don't do anything stupid. Keep a clean sheet for at least 10 or 15 minutes. The crowd's going to get fucking anxious. They're going to start moaning. And Jürgen's going to change it and all that. And I think, you know, we can, we can hold on. No problem. Nick one on the break. 90 seconds. 90 seconds into the fucking second half. Yeah, Nathan Ake under hits a pass. Edison just fucking boots him. You know what I mean? So weird. Why he didn't stand up, let him try and go round him? Because he ain't because Darwin Nunes ain't put it in from that angle. I'm sorry he's not. You know what I mean? He's no Sergio Aguero. Remember years ago at Liverpool at home, tight angle. Darwin Nunes is not that man. If Edison if, if Edison stands him up there, he's got to go wide toward the court, towards the, the, the touchline and try and cut it in. But anyway, hindsight's a beautiful thing. Edison cleans him out, penalty. So you're thinking, Jesus Christ, the crowd's up again. And I'm thinking, they're just our own worst enemy. We're our own worst enemy. You know, we've got to our time winning 1-0. We're well and truly in the game. Liverpool can't fully press us because they realise we're getting it in over the, over the uh, press. And um, we give away a penalty. McAllister steps up, he scores. Just let me have a bit of brew. He steps up and he scores. 1-1. One, one. That's it then. The crowd's up, yeah? Liverpool are turning the screw. They're rattling a few challenges in there. We look disjointed. We're not, we can't string any passes together. Kevin De Bruyne's not in the game. We're not getting him involved. Erling Haaland was not in the game. Do you know what I mean? He's walking around up the top. He, he wasn't pressing. Whether he's been told to do that, I don't know. But he didn't look the usual Erling Haaland to me. He looked a bit leggy. Um, Alvarez on the left wasn't working. Um, the Nathan Ake side, we were getting attacked a lot. Uh, Diaz from Liverpool had three or four great chances to win the game for them. Uh, he missed. We were lucky. Um, Ortega's come on. So, so hard to come on in a game um, of that magnitude and just slot straight in. I've got to give Ortega 100% credit. He came on. His first couple of kicks were a little bit shaky, giving the ball away, panicking. But other than that, he saved us. You know what I mean? He really did save us. But we had our chances as well in that second half. Phil Foden, it's, it's ricocheted off him and hit the bar. It's probably going to be disallowed because of the um, because it hit his hand. Um, there's a number of times we got caught, we was on the break and um, we should have done better. Foden went through and he, he tried to put it through Keller's legs and he didn't. Um, but the second half, we had to ride it. The, the Liverpool had got the tails up, the cop was up, the crowd was up. And at the end of the day, when you've got all that going, when, when I say that Anfield, when it's going, can fucking beat you, that was going to beat us. You know what I mean? So I've got to give credit to City for digging deep. I've got to. You know what I mean? Because we let them get back into that. We could have controlled that crowd second half, got them frustrated and won there. But we're our own worst downfall. You know what I mean? I thought John Stones did okay. I thought Manuel Akanji, for me, did really, really well. Did really, really well. Um, but just little mistakes. Just our own little mistakes. It's frustrating. Um, so we're getting towards the end of the game. Um, Diaz has missed a few. And then Jeremy Doku. 
you know, and, and bringing Jeremy on was a bit weird. I don't know why and whether he wanted that outlet, I don't know. But there's a lot of fans now starting to question Doku. I mean, I said on a, on a podcast the other week that he's very much raw. He's very, very uh, unpredictable. Um, and I think he's going to benefit from working a season under Pep. He definitely needs to improve. You know, Pep Guardiola turned Raheem Sterling into... Um, a 20 goal a season winger, you know what I mean? When he comes to City, he was a little bit raw. So I'm hoping Pep works his magic on him. He's definitely talent inside Jeremy Doku. Um, but he frustrates you. I think the word with Jeremy is frustration. I think you, you you know he's got the ball, you know he's got the tricks. There was one where he, he sort of w looked like he was going to cut in between two defenders in the box. He should have done that because they couldn't have touched him. They would have brought him down. He didn't. He laid it off. Um, but Jeremy gets through on the left. He cuts inside. He hits a great shot. Keller's beat. It's the inside of the post. Bounces straight back into Keller's arms. That could have been the winner. It could have bounced to Harlan, Foden coming in, tapped it in. We're winning 2-1. Um, that sort of gives us a bit of breathing time because Liverpool then after that thought, hold on a minute, we need to relax a bit because they could catch us on the counter. So as far as Pep goes, making them substitutions bringing on Kovacic in the midfield, which I thought was a good move, going a 4-4-2 with Foden up top with Haaland, I thought we looked OK and I thought it got us through the game. But last minute, injury time, whatever it was, 89, no, sorry, 99 minutes, whatever, the ball bounces in the box. Jeremy Doku jumps with a high foot, clears the ball, also touches McAllister. I'm going to be honest, at the time, it was right in front of the city end. At the time, I thought, penalty. And I think everyone did. I thought, it's a penalty. You could see he'd won the ball, but the foot was there. Um, we had an anxious couple of minutes wait, and they didn't give it. So we were relieved. We were relieved, you know what I mean? Um, I've looked back at the replay since. I couldn't argue if they give it. I have listened to why they didn't give it. Apparently, he did get the ball first, and he couldn't move his foot anywhere else because the play was too tight. McAllister, the way he reacted for me was like someone had stabbed him in the neck. So did they look at that and think, calm down, mate? You know what I mean? Um, <coughs> I do agree with what Klopp says. Anywhere else on the pitch, it's a foul. They're giving it for a high foot, in my opinion. Um, I don't know why. We'd have to see what the decision was. We'd have to get the recordings. But, you know, listen, it's, high, it's all right, Liverpool fans moaning about these decisions, yeah? We've been to Anfield many a time. Phil Foden penalties, and balls. Bernardo Silva getting fouled should have been sent off. So it is what it is. We got away with it. We're taking it. They blew the whistle. I think Liverpool was happy with a draw at the end. I think City was happy with a draw at the end. I think both teams over the two halves, it equaled itself out. So I'm not going to moan about it. But from our point of view, I just felt we were sloppy. I just felt that the usual uh, passing in the midfield and, 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 and finding the players in the gaps wasn't there. I felt that Alvarez on the left didn't really work. He was OK in possession, but out of possession, he, he, he was being asked to run all over the place and it's not him. Um, Rodri kept giving the ball away, then he got rattled. Um, he he, he uh, got dragged into a foul, which he had to make uh, because people sloppy passing. Um, and I feel like Nathan Ake was left exposed a lot of the time on, on, on that left-hand side. So, you know, Kevin De Bruyne coming off the pitch, having a little bit of a moan with Pep. I don't mind that, actually. I don't actually mind that to see a player have an opinion with a manager. You know, he was probably frustrated saying, look, I'm playing there, but I'm not getting the ball. No one's finding me. And he wasn't, you know what I mean? It was a few times where we needed to be brave and slot that ball in that gap and find uh, Kevin, but we didn't. We were going safe. Liverpool pressed us well, second half, uh, caused us into a few mistakes. Um, but a point's a point at Anfield, people. At the end of the day, we didn't get beat. We took a point off Liverpool. We took two off Liverpool as well. We've got the point. We're still in the title race. The big games are still coming up, you know what I mean? I've, I've listened to them this morning saying what they're going to do to City and all that. That's fine. Carry on thinking like that. We've had all this before. You came the other season. You told us what you were going to do and it didn't happen. 
So make sure you do it this time. You know what I mean? Make sure you do it this time. Um, I watched Arsenal at weekend. wasn't great. You know, it wasn't great. So they've got to go to Tottenham. They've got to go to Old Trafford. You know, there's plenty of twists and turns in this title race yet. We know we've got to go to Tottenham. We know we've got Villa at home and Arsenal at home. So, you know, if we win this title from here, it'd be one of the best. But the players know that. The manager knows that. And us as fans know that. We've just got to keep doing what we're doing. We've got FA Cups and Champions League games coming up. We've got plenty of games coming thick and fast, but we've got to do what we need to do. Um, but as far as that left-hand side without Grealish, I feel like a lot of fans now are realising what Grealish brings to the team when, when we talk about control. I know people used to want, oh, bring Doku on, he's exciting, he's this, he's that. He is exciting and that, but you've seen it. There's not a lot of end product with Jeremy at the minute. You know, he's learning. Nunes has been given a chance out there. Was okay, a bit more control. Oscar Bob, you know, we brought him on at Newcastle because he was a bit more controlled. I don't think I'd have played Oscar yesterday. I think Anfield atmosphere is a bit wild. But you look at Liverpool, they've got the young kid Bradley playing at right back or left back, whichever, wherever he played. Left back, was it? And then you've got, um, you've got uh, uh, Quanza playing at centre back. So, you know, it's you got to have credit to Liverpool. You know, the team they've got, they've got injuries and that, but they're still having a go. I thought Diaz was magical yesterday for them. I thought he was really, really tricky and hard to uh, defend against. I thought that in the first half, Nunes was uh, kept quiet by Akanji. I thought Akanji was really good. I thought he was up against him, strong, powerful. Um, I thought he did a good job. But overall, I think as City fans, we're all going to say it was a good point. A point at Anfield is good. We, we always say it. We never win at Anfield, so we took a point. Um... And we just keep moving. We just keep moving. We've got Newcastle coming up in the FA Cup. Uh, a little bit of a break from the league. Get through that. We're at an FA Cup semi-final at Wembley, which is always brilliant. So, yeah, buzzing with that. Um, but other than that, people, it is what it is. You know what I mean? We rolled our luck second half. We should have been too clear in the first half. We're taking the point. We've got no fresh injury worries. I think Edison will be fine. And we move on to Newcastle at weekend. Um, but let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about um, the performance, who you think performed well, who you think didn't perform well. Um, but I don't think it's time to panic. I think we've got to look at the positives of the result. We're walking away with a point. Um, we're still in the title race. We've got Arsenal coming up. You know, we beat Arsenal. It changes again. And... Um, we just got to have faith, have faith in Pep, have faith in the team. We know that this is the part of the season where we keep on moving and we keep going. I'm sure the players are going to look at that performance and pick out the bones and say, you know what? Yeah, we didn't do this right or we did this right. And uh, I just feel like we've got to get behind the team now. Last 10 games, get behind the team. Um, you seen yesterday the atmosphere at, at, at Liverpool, yeah? I'd love nothing more to, than to create that at the Etihad. Yeah, the South Stand for me should be like the cop. That should be your supporters, loyal, hardcore, ultra sort of stand. There should be no advertising banners around it. We should have our own banners in there every game. Um, I feel like the corporate bit in there needs to move. And I feel like, you know, this should be a, a, a free tier of, of, of um, noise. You know what I mean? You can still have the tourist fans. You can still have your corporate sections. You can still earn your money, but put them at the opposite end. Get that south stand as the main ultra section. The corporate bit in the south stand for me doesn't need to be there. You know what I mean? Doesn't need to be there. Um, I do feel like I watched some games at weekend where, you know, they were like at the, 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 the cop end and that. It's just they let them do what they need to do as fans. They let that that end look the part, you know what I mean? That end starts to chanting and that. At City, we just like moaning, you know what I mean? People sit there and moan about the atmosphere, but no one's doing anything about it, you know what I mean? No one's doing anything about it. Um, I feel there's a problem with it at the Etihad at the minute. I feel last season was the best we've ever had for atmosphere, and instead of continuing the momentum, we're letting it slip. Um, I'm, I'm kind of getting bored with it now. I'm kind of getting bored with it now because... 
I feel like people just feel like I'm moaning, but I only want the best for the club. And, I, and, and people that come up to me every game tell me the same. So I, mean, I am kind of bored of talking about it. I am kind of bored of talking about it now, you know what I mean? If the club want to get involved and make that a, a, a fan, a real hardcore section of support for Manchester City, that get the team over the line, the 12 man, do you know what I mean? I'm sure Pep and the players would want that. Then let's do it. If you don't want to do it and you want to fill it with tourists and corporates and and fucking volleyvants and all that shit and get £400 a game out of a supporter and get your spend up and all that, do it. But I'll tell you now, the heart and soul of the football club, you, 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 you're slowly losing it, you know? There's two lads I spoke to yesterday at the away end, been to City for over 50 years, yeah? Next season, not going. Giving it up. Not going. Disillusion with the club, he said. Disillusion. Don't know what didn't press him on it. Disillusion with the club. When I see supporters like that who have been through the mill with this football club, who should be enjoying the best football we've ever seen, telling me they're giving it up because of disillusion with the club, there's something wrong, man. Something wrong. But listen, like I said on the overlap, the overlap, people slagging me off on the overlap saying, oh, Steve, you're not part of the team. I'm not part of the team. I'm not. No way, I'm not. But what I am is a loyal supporter who loves the football club, who wants the best for the football club. Nothing but the best. Never try to criticise it. Never get on the players' back. Always want the best for the football club. You know? And um, if I can't speak out about it, then I'm not doing my job. People ask me to use my platform, I am. All we ask is for someone at the club maybe to have a sit down with a few fans and let's talk a few things out and see if we can improve it. If we do, if we have a sit down and nothing comes of it, we've tried. But this lack of uh, silence, deafening silence from the club towards the fans is, not is, 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 we can all hear it. Uh, the 1894 lads, I think they're getting a bit of harassment in the stands off stewards and that now. You didn't see that in a cop yesterday. I seen the stewards passing banners to, in, into the cop, holding banners to get the atmosphere up, you know what I mean? But it depends what people want. Do you want um, Do you want a football experience where you go and sit in the tunnel club, you spend a grand a game and you sit there, you get lattes passed to you at half-time and you watch the game and then Pep turns around and moans at you. Do you want that? Or do you want an end that's trying? A lot of young Man City supporters up and coming, trying to get behind the team. Because for me, that's what football's about, the fans. And it's about the energy that the fans bring to the stadium. And the players will tell you that when you bring the energy, they feed off it. Yeah, they feed off it. But if we're fans in, in the stand with our hands tied behind our back and we haven't got no choice, we're just a laughing stock. We're a laughing stock on social media, TikTok. You've got all them uh, kids now in the stand with the lights on the phones, yeah, waving the lights around. Is that is that what we've become? Because I'm getting tagged in TikToks with that, telling me, look at Man City fans and all that. The coach greeting. It's great, the coach greeting, you know. But when it's a coach greeting for the kids, we're getting online, we're getting bullied by it and that. But nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care. Don't worry about it. People at Man City, bury your head in the sand. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't matter to you. You go home, you're getting paid, yeah. You're getting your dough off the club. Yeah, you're frightened to death of saying anything in case you lose your jobs. I get that. But at the end of the day, something needs to be done because you're losing the heartbeat of your football club. You're losing it slowly, slowly and slowly and slowly. The heartbeat of Manchester City is eroding away. And that's in my opinion. That's it. But listen, you might disagree. You might think Steve's talking bollocks. But this is what I'm getting every game now. People telling me this. So it is what it is. But anyway, a point at Anfield. We keep on moving. We keep on going. We've got Newcastle in the cup. Let's get behind the lads in the cup. Let's get us to the semi-final. We're going to have a load of Geordies in there. Yeah, we're going to have to be on form. The stadium's going to need our support because seven, 8,000 Geordies make a lot of noise. So, uh, listen, keep going, everybody. Let me know what you think, especially about the stadium and the fans and that. Um, and, uh, yeah, see you at Newcastle. Up the Blues. <laughs>